Okay guys, so in this video we're going to go through the Governor Basic menu of the CGY750. Now before we actually go to the menu, I want to point out a few things in the main screen that we have to pay attention to. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is this flashing uh, exclamation point in the triangle symbol right here. What this means is that when the CGY was booted up, it sensed that the throttle was in a position which was telling the governor to come on, so it automatically locked it out and prevented the governor from turning on. Uh, so this is kind of a safety feature that it has to prevent you uh, accidentally spooling up when you uh, first boot up the CGY 750 if you're in idle up or something like that. So the governor will not activate unless uh, it detects low throttle first. So that's uh, important to note there. Uh, the second thing is, if we scroll over using the mode keys in the main menu, you can see I go a couple menus over here we have our operation mode. And by default, our operation mode is gyro plus governor. Now, if you are not using the CGY's governor, you need to change this from gyro to governor to gyro plus throttle. Uh, and this will just pass the throttle signal through uh, based on your throttle curve. Uh, so if you're using like a, the castle internal governor, you would want to run this mode. And this will let your throttle curve just pass through the castle governor or the uh, castle internal governor and work correctly. But since we're going to be using the CGY internal governor during this setup, I'm going to switch it back to gyro plus governor. So once we ensure that we have gyro plus governor enabled, we're going to go over to the governor basic menu by using the mode plus key to get back to here and then the plus data key to scroll over to governor basic. And then we're going to enter the menu and the first screen we come across here is the RPM set. So for this screen we're going to need to calibrate the radio to the CGY 750. To calibrate the radio to the CGY 750 the first thing we need to do is go into our governor menu and ensure we have the governor turned on in every flight condition that we intend to use the governor in. In my case I need to turn it on in normal mode, idle up 1 and idle up 2. Once we've done this we can select the appropriate mode for the RPM range that our model requires. In my case, I'm using the 1000 to 2500 RPM range as I plan to run between 1800 and 2150 on the T-Rex 700E. So once we have this selected, the next thing to do is to calibrate the radio to the CGY by selecting the calibrate uh, button in the governor screen. And by default, the RPM on the radio should read 1500 RPM and the RPM in the CGY 750, again by default, should be 1500. So when we hit calibrate, it's going to bring us to a menu and ask us to select the RPM to calibrate to. And you want to go ahead and select 1500. We can then turn the rate down to off. And if you watch the CGY 750 screen, it should also turn to off once we reach off and the rate on the governor menu. And when you start to turn the rate back up from off, you should see that the RPM in the 14SG matches the RPM set in the CGY 750. Once we've gotten the rate in the 14SG to match the CGY 750, we need to repeat this procedure for each of the flight modes that we have the governor turned in on in order to make sure that the radio and CGY 750 are correctly calibrated. So you're gonna to wanna to flip into idle up one and make sure that the rate in the CGY 750 is corresponding with the rate set in the If 14. they are not corresponding, then you can adjust the CGY 750 screen by pressing the plus or minus data key so that the RPM in the CGY screen matches the 14SG. Now that we have the radio calibrated to the CGY 750, we can use the governor screen in our 14SG to program in our desired RPMs. And this offers a tremendous advantage over some of the other Flabrowless units, since if I want to change my RPM, I can do so simply by adjusting the value in my radio, and it will perfectly correspond to the value in the CGY 750. So if you want to make adjustments at the field, you can easily do so from your radio. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and program in my RPM for my normal mode, idle up 1 and idle up 2 flight condition. Once we have our desired RPMs programmed in our radio, we are all set with the RPM set menu and we can move our on next to the next screen. Our next screen is our gear ratio. So this screen is as simple as programming in the gear ratio for our model. Uh, my T-Rex 700E has an 8.46 gear ratio, so I'm going to go ahead and select that using the plus or minus data key. And once I have that programmed in, we're going to move to the next screen, which is our pull count. 
Uh, if you are using a nitro governor, you would ignore this parameter, but since I'm using electric, I'm going to program in 10 poles, which is what the Lion 850MX motor has. And we can move to our next screen. Using the electric governor, I am actually going to change my serotype from the default analog to 1520, as the electric governor seems to work better with most DSCs using the 1520 setting. Once we pick that, we can go to our next screen here, which is stick position. So I'm actually going to skip this screen at the moment as it's a little bit out of order. Uh, we're going to do another parameter first before we set The that. next screen here is our on off switch. If we enable this, then we're able to set up a switch to turn the governor on or off. I tend to advise most people not to use this parameter as if you do enable it and you have your switch set up such that when you turn your radio on and boot up the CGY 750, the switch is in a position which would tell the governor to be on, you will trigger the safety lockout on the main screen that I showed you earlier. And you'll have to actually cycle the on off switch before your governor will ever work. Uh, so I tend to leave this parameter set to inhibit and I use the stick switch in my idle ups to control the governor on or off. The next parameter after governor on off is battery fail safe. So this lets you select a uh, position where if the voltage falls below a set limit, your throttle will cut. I tend to leave this to, set to inhibit most of the time, but if you want to set up some sort of fail safe, you can do so in this screen here. The next parameter here is the yaw compensation. This parameter ties the governor to your rudder gyro for some of the pre-comps in the CGY750's control loop. So it's a good parameter to ensure that you have set correctly as it will help the model fly better. The way to interpret this menu is if you look down at your helicopter from the top, uh, staring straight down at the rotor head, if your blades rotate clockwise and the sensor is mounted such that the top of the sensor is facing you, then you would have the default parameter of clockwise top. Uh, if your sensor was upside down, so the CGY label was facing towards the ground, uh, you would select clockwise bottom. And likewise, if your rotor blades rotated counterclockwise, you would uh, change the parameter correspondingly. For most models out there, either clockwise top or clockwise bottom is suitable. Uh, in my case here, my CGY 750 sensor, as you can kind of see in the screen, is facing towards the rotor blades, so I'm going to leave it as clockwise top for my case. Our next parameter here is the limit set screen, and this teaches the governor where low throttle is as well as full throttle. Before we can set this parameter, we want to make sure that we have the throttle channel reversed in our Futaba radio, and we also want to make sure that we have the endpoints calibrated in our speed controller. So I've gone ahead and already calibrated the endpoints in my Castle Edge 160. Uh, you can consult your Castle manual really quick to see how to do that. Uh, once you have those set though, we can go ahead and move our throttle stick to the full low position, and we can press the plus data key, and that will teach the uh, low stick position, and then we can move to the full throttle position and similarly hit the plus data key to teach the high position. And once both of those are done, um, we are all set. Once we have limit set, we can move on to our next screen, which will be our limit test. Uh, if you had a nitro model, we could actually test the several positions here. Uh, on an electric model, this test menu isn't too useful, so I'm going to skip to the next one, which is our revolution sensor. So if you had a nitro model, you could spin your engine over and find uh, how well your magnet sensor is reading. Generally, you want to see this at least 60%. I usually try to shoot for at least 80% uh, if I'm using a backplate sensor or 90 plus percent if I'm using a traditional magnet sensor. Since we're using an electric model, I'm actually going to enter the governor expert screen for a second here by pressing and holding the plus mode key until it says governor expert. And we're going to change a few parameters in here. Uh, the first one being this response. Uh, we're going to change this from middle, which is for a glow or nitro model, over to silent, which is for electrics. And this changes some of the control algorithm in the uh, governor screen. Uh, it changes a few of the parameters here in the governor expert menu, such as the governor gain. Um, generally, our governor gain by default in silent mode is 10%. Uh, this tends to be a little bit high. I'm actually going to lower this to about... 
uh, 6% to start and I will adjust it as needed at the field. You typically will need very little governor gain, somewhere between 5, 8, 9% uh, with most models. So once we have that selected, we can look at our throttle mode, which by default is set to optimize, which again, uh, typically is for a nitro model. Um, generally with an electric, we want to start with fixed. Um, you can also play with optimize as well. Some electric models work better with that, but you will need to uh, test fly your model first. But to start, I'm going to start with fixed for my throttle mode in this case. Uh, we have some delays in here, rev up delay. Uh, puts a delay on how fast the uh, different idle up head speeds change. So if I flip from normal mode to idle up one or from idle up one to idle up two, this will control how fast the head speeds change from one to the other. Uh, if you're getting a tail kick as you switch from one RPM to the next, you can turn this parameter up and this will increase the delay and should resolve any tail kicks you see. Uh, for now, I'm gonna leave this at default and tune it at the field. Similarly, we have rev down delay, which is if you went from idle up 2 to idle up 1 or idle up 1 to normal mode. If you saw a tail kick there, you could also increase the delay in order to smooth that out. Uh, same thing here with start delay. Uh, this impacts how long it takes the governor to kick in uh, once you uh, tell it to turn on. So we can adjust this also at the field if we need to. Uh, on revolution, this is what determines when the governor kicks in and starts controlling the throttle. Uh, in this case, once it reaches 60% of the commanded RPM, so if I had my RPMs set to 1000, once it reached 600 or 60%, the governor would completely take over the throttle curve and start governing. Uh, we can lower this parameter or turn it up. I'm gonna leave it at default for now. Uh, low limit hover. This controls how low the governor is able to bring the throttle. Uh, same thing here, this is how low it's able to bring the throttle in some of our idle uh, Here you speeds. can set the voltage where the battery failsafe kicks in. Uh, I'm going to skip this for now. Uh, we have our low revolution, which is by default 1000 RPM. Uh, that's fine since we're using the 1000 to 2500 RPM mode in our 14SG radio. And that's it for the governor. The last thing we're going to do is set our stick switch menu which we had skipped over earlier because we had not set our limits yet. Uh, you need to make sure that you have the limit for idle and high set before you can check this parameter correctly. So since I've already set my limits, uh, I can see right now with my collective stick all the way down, I'm reading 0% and the governor is off. So if I slowly move my collective up at about 30%, it's going to change to on, so the governor will turn on and above 30% we're on all the way to 100%. On a nitro model this allows us to smoothly control the spool up and spool down of the model without the governor kicking on and we can use it the exact same way with an electric helicopter. This finishes the governor basic setup on the CGY 750 for an electric governor. The last step in the process is to go into our throttle curve and set up the background throttle curves that the governor will run off of. I recommend using a U-shaped curve uh, for both idle up 1 and idle up 2. And for normal mode, we can use a slightly modified linear curve just to ease the spool up. And we may tweak this later at the field depending on how the model responds to our stick inputs. But this concludes the Electric Governor Basic Setup. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I look forward to the next video.